Here's the second lesson of the exponential functions unit, and this lesson is on exponential decay. Let me remind you about the general equation of any exponential function. The general equation looks like y equals a times b to the power of x. Our independent variable x is in the exponent, which is what makes this an exponential relationship between x and y. In this equation, the a parameter stands for the initial amount. The b parameter in today's lesson is going to be the decay factor. It's basically the number that the initial value is repeatedly being multiplied by. And in today's lesson, it's a decay factor because the b value is always going to be a number between 0 and 1. When we multiply a by a number between 0 and 1 repeatedly, it's going to make it get smaller, which is why we say this is exponential decay. In the previous lesson, the b value, the base of the power, was always bigger than 1, which is why it was exponential growth in lesson 1. But in this lesson, always exponential decay. y stands for the future amount, and x is the number of decay periods. Or another way of thinking about x, it's the number of times that a is going to be multiplied by b. And we can always calculate that exponent x by doing the total amount of time, and divide that by the time of one decay period. By doing that equation, that tells us what the exponent equals. That will tell us how many times the a is going to be multiplied by b. And before we move on to an actual question, let me just really quickly remind you about what the graphs of these functions look like. I've actually made two graphs. One of them, I'm going to show you what an exponential growth relationship looks like. And that happens when the base of the power is greater than one. The exponential growth relationship looks like this with a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. This function is increasing. As x increases, y is also increasing. An exponential decay function will have that when b is between zero and one will look like a horizontal reflection of this. It's going to be a decreasing function as x increases, y decreases, but it is still going to level off towards that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, that's a good re reminder of everything you should know. Now let's try a couple questions. Nuclear power plants use uranium-239 as a power source. U-239 has a half-life of about two years. That means every two years, the amount of uranium that you have is cut in half. So for part A, it wants us to complete the chart for the amount of a 1,000 milligram sample that will be left after 10 years. Notice in my chart, I've started it for you. I have the years going up by increments of two, and that's because it tells us the half-life is every two years. So after two years have elapsed, one half-life period will have elapsed. In four years, that's two half-life periods. In six years, that's three half-life periods, and you get the pattern. So what happens to this am amount of uranium? Every two years, it gets cut in half. So it goes from 1,000 to 500, and two more years later, so after four years have elapsed, we have to cut that 500 in half. It goes down to 250. And then keep cutting it in half. We go to 125, 62 and a half, and then 31.25. Hopefully you see the pattern that to get between these consecutive y values, we're just multiplying by a half each time. There's a common ratio between these terms, which is what makes this an exponential relationship. Part B says to graph this relationship. So my two variables, I have the number of years, I'll call that x, and the amount of uranium, that's y. So on my x-axis, I have the number of years, and I need my scale to cover a span of 10 years, so I'll make this go by twos. And the y-axis is the amount of uranium that we have in milligrams. And it started with 1,000, and then it keeps getting cut in half, so the highest I need the y-values to be is 1,000. I think if I go by 100s, that'll make get me up to 1,000. I'm just going to label every other spot though, so 200, 400, 6, 8, and 1,000. So when zero years have elapsed, so at the beginning, our initial value was 1,000. So I can plot a point right there. After two years, that was cut in half down to 500. Then after four years, it was down to 250. Then 125 then 62.5, and then 31.25. You can see this is leveling off towards zero. It'll never actually reach zero though, because half of something is always still something. 
So there's going to be a horizontal asymptote here at y equals zero. Notice I showed an arrow showing that this relationship is going to continue and it's going to keep approaching that horizontal asymptote. Exponential functions usually are continuous in both directions. So there's no restrictions on domain. So typically we would have an arrow on the left side of this relationship as well. But in the context of this question, our domain is restricted to being greater than or equal to zero. So I won't have an arrow on the left side. Let's now write an equation to model this growth. Remember the equation is always of the format y equals a times b to the power of x. In this question, we know that we start off with 1,000 milligrams, so my a value is 1,000. And that 1,000 is repeatedly being cut in half, so the base of the power b is a half. I can continue improving upon this formula because I know to calculate x, I always do total amount of time divided by the length of one decay period, which is two years. So I can simplify this equation a little bit to y equals 1,000 times a half to the t over two. Notice I'm writing this as a function of t. So let's use function notation here. Instead of saying y, I'll say the amount at time t equals 1,000 times a half to the t over two. There we go. That's a great equation that describes the relationship between the amount of uranium and the time that has elapsed. Let's see if we can use that equation now to find how much remains after 25 years. So I'll rewrite my equation. And now I want to find the amount of uranium after 25 years. So I'll sub in 25 for my amount of time. Now in 25 years, it's not going to be cut in half 25 times, right? It only gets cut in half once every two years. And that's what my exponent is solving for me. It's going to figure out how many times is it cut in half. Well, in 25 years, if I divide that by 2, it's going to be cut in half 12 and a half times. I can just use a calculator to evaluate this. And I only have about 0 0.173 milligrams remaining. Let's do another example. This time we're working with plutonium-239, which has a half-life of 24 years. Find the amount of a 50 milligram sample left after 35 years. So this is another half-life question. So this is an exponential relationship. And I know exponential relationships take the form y equals a times b to the power of x. Let me jot down on the side which of these four parameters we know and which one we don't know. In the question, it tells me that plutonium has a half-life of 24 years. So the fact that it says half-life tells me that that amount of plutonium is repeatedly being multiplied by a half every 24 years. So the base of my power in my equation is going to be a half. It's repeated multiplication by a half. Find the amount of a 50 milligram sample. So I know I start with 50 milligrams. So my A value is 50. And I want to know how much of that 50 is left after 35 years. So I don't know the future amount. So I must know the exponent. The exponent is always the total amount of time. Well, it says that 35 years are going to elapse. So 35 is my total amount of time. And I have to divide that by what is the length of time of one half-life period? And it says the half-life period of the function is 24 years. So if I do 35 divided by 24, that will tell me how many times the initial value is going to be cut in half. So I can sub into my equation now. And I know y equals 50 times a half to the power of 35 over 24. Make sure you follow the correct order of operations. And when we evaluate this, I get about 18.2 milligrams. Let's do another question, but this time we'll do one where the exponential decay, so the decay rate, is given to us as a percent instead of as a factor that it's being multiplied by. When we're given the decay rate as a percent, we'll use the formula y equals a times, now to get the base of the power, if we're decreasing by a certain percent, the base of our power is 1 minus that rate of decrease to the power of x. And in this equation, a is still the initial amount, r is the rate of decrease, and make sure you always use the decimal value of that rate by dividing the percentage by 100. And x is the number of decay periods. And if necessary, you can still use that formula total time divided by time of one decay period to calculate x. 
Now let's try a question. It says that you buy a new car for $24,000. The value of the car decreases by 16% every year. How much will the car be worth in eight years? So I noticed that the rate of decrease is given to us as a percentage. So I'm going to use the formula y equals a times one minus r to the power of x. From the question, which of these parameters does it give us? Let me jot them down on the side. Y, the future value, what's it going to be worth in eight years? We don't know, but we know the initial value. It starts off with $24,000 value. The rate of decrease is 16%. Percent means out of 100. So we'll divide it by 100 to get its decimal value of 0 0.16. And X, the number of times it's going to decrease by 16%. Well, that's an easy calculation for this one because it decreases by 16% every year. So in eight years, it'll decrease by 16% eight times, right? Eight divided by one is eight. If we sub into our equation, we'll be able to get the value. If I simplify that base of the power, notice it simplifies to 0 0.84. So really what's happening is we're multiplying that 24,000 by 0.84 eight times. Decreasing it by 16% means that car is only retaining 84% of its value each year. So if I evaluate this, I get a value of $5,949.02. Two more examples left. This one's pretty straightforward. It says an adult takes 400 milligrams of Advil. So I think that's what we start off with. Let me just jot that down. My initial value is 400 milligrams. Each hour, the amount of Advil in the adult system decreases by 29%. So I have my rate of decrease. Divide 29% by 100 to get 0.29. How much Advil will be left after four hours? So I can get my exponent by doing the total amount of time, which is four hours, and divide that by the time of one decay period. Well, it says it decreases by 29% every hour. So four divided by one is just four. The only thing I don't know is the future amount, the amount that's left after four hours. And now I can just sub those parameters into my equation for exponential decay when it's given to me as a rate. I use the formula y equals a times one minus the rate of decrease to the power of x. The parameters I know, I know that the initial amount a is 400. I know that the rate of decrease is 29%. So as a decimal, that is 0 0.29. So do 1 minus 0 0.29. And my exponent is 4. It's going to decrease by 29% four times. If I evaluate this, I get approximately 101.65 milligrams. So that's how much Advil will be left in the person's system after four hours. Let's move on to the next question. Here's the last question. And this relates to the first question we did. Um, it's the uranium-239, which has the half-life of two years, and we start with 1,000 milligrams. But this time it says, how long will it take to decay to 10 milligrams? So if you remember the equation we did at the beginning of the lesson, it was A at T equals 1,000 times a half to the T over 2, right? The initial value is 1,000. It's repeatedly being cut in half. How often does it get cut in half? Every two years. And this question doesn't ask us to calculate an amount. It gives us the amount. It says, how long is it going to take until the amount we get to is 10 milligrams? So I can set the amount equal to 10 milligrams. And now I have to solve for T. If I want to isolate T, it's in the exponent. So immediately I'm thinking if I'm trying to solve for an unknown exponent, one of the main tools we can use is the logarithm function. And I'll get to that in a minute. First, I'm going to isolate the power that has the t. I'm going to isolate this power by dividing both sides of this equation by 1,000. So on the left side of this equation, I have 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01. And on the right side, I have a half to the power of t over 2. Now, if I'm trying to figure out what exponent goes on a half to get 0 0.01, a logarithmic function can find me an exponent. So I can figure out the exponent t over 2 that goes on a half to get 0 0.01 by using the logarithmic function, setting the base of the logarithm equal to the base of the power. So the base of the logarithm is a half and the argument is 0 0.01. Make sure you understand what this means. When I do that function, 
I'm finding out what exponent goes on 0.5 to make it equal to 0 0.01. And I know whatever that exponent is, is what t over 2 is going to equal. So before I actually type this in, just a quick reminder, if I were to ask you to evaluate log base 3 of 9, what that means, it means what exponent can I put on 3 to make it be equal to 9? So another way of saying that is 3 to what power is 9? So of course, the answer to that logarithm is 2, because 3 squared is 9. So when I'm doing this logarithm, I'm just figuring out what exponent goes on 0.5 to make it equal to 0 0.01. And that's exactly what we're looking for in this equation here. And then of course, I'm going to want to isolate t. So I'll multiply the 2 to the other side. And when I evaluate this on my calculator, I get an answer of about 13.3. And what units are we in here? We are in years. Our units of time is in years. So that's how long it would take for that 1,000 milligram sample to get down to 10 milligrams. And there we have it. There's the end of the exponential decay lesson. Hopefully that helped. Jensen.